a unforgettable weekend for McLaren with a double podium in Suzuka. Lando had an electric start, gave Max a real battle there outside of turn one. It was obviously a strong weekend from Oscar Piastri after his extension news. I just think back to the way that we were discussing this team after Bahrain. Have you ever seen kind of just this this turnaround, uh, this changing of gears? I mean, who do we attribute the success to? Is it a certain person? Is it the team overall, Lawrence? Can you remember a team that's that's been able to bounce back like McLaren has this season? It is it is rare. I, I can't think of a team that's gone from essentially back of the grid at the opening race to uh, double podiums later in the season. It, I think it shows a number of things. One is just how tight the field is in Formula One at the moment. Uh, we haven't had that for a long time. I know we've got Red Bull a long way ahead. Well, I say Red Bull, really Max Verstappen a long way ahead. But the rest of the teams are, are, are very close. And it's been the case now under this kind of cost cap environment as well, where if you bring a big update and it works really well, you're going to make huge gains, like significant gains. Um, and the other thing about the Suzuka result is that Suzuka is basically a track that is perfect for the McLaren. We know the McLaren is very good in high-speed corners. It has been since they brought upgrades to the car in Austria and Silverstone, which is really where we saw this big turnaround begin. And um, Suzuka is just a series of high-speed corner after high-speed corner after high-speed corner after high-speed corner. <laughs> and um, in, in Silverstone, uh, you know, the really fast stuff, the McLaren was actually faster than the Red Bull. So... Um, this was always a track that was going to suit them now that they have got the car into the position where they have. But um, that is that is massively impressive. And yeah, I mean, who do you put it down to? Well, you know, at, at the start of the year, uh, they knew they had uh, under delivered essentially over mm -hmm. over the winter with what they'd done with the development of their car. And they were concerned about it going into the first race, rightly so. But they said, look, you know, by the end of the year, our target is to be uh, the fourth best team. Now, they've got Aston Martin in their sights to to, to become uh, mm -hmm. fourth in, in the Constructors' Championship, which would be very impressive. But it, they, they were talking about being the fourth fastest team. And actually, right now, on certain tracks, certainly on the like Suzuki, you know, they went well in uh, Singapore as well, of course. Uh, Norris finished second to Carlos Sainz there. So, you know, it is now starting to be across a range of circuits that they're quick. You know, there's a very strong argument to say that they've absolutely got the second fastest car at the moment going into the final few races. And Lando Norris, I think, um, since uh, since the upgrade arrived, certainly, um, yeah, around kind of Austria Silverstone time, he's second in the amount of points he scored only to Max Verstappen. So that's the level they're up now, which I think is a bit of a surprise. But where should the credit go? Well, you know, I, I think uh, Andreas Stella, who's uh, who became team principal at the start of this year, that was a big role to take on. Uh, Andreas Seidel went from McLaren. Uh, he was you know, very well respected at McLaren, but decided to go and head up uh, Sauber, which is going to become Audi in 2026. And so Stella took over and he he was very kind of well respected team. But having uh, been to a few media sessions with him now, you know, he's he's really very, very charismatic. Like he's really a kind of guy that you would definitely get behind and, and you'd work and then you'd believe it as well when, when he says stuff. And then to be able to turn everything that he was saying into actual results on track, that is very, very impressive. And there's a few big pieces that are still slotting into place at McLaren. Uh, you know, they've got Rob Marshall coming over from Red Bull. Uh, you know, uh, they've got, um, uh, Nate, I've got his name, the guy from Ferrari. Sanchez. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, David Sanchez, yeah, from Ferrari. And so by the time all of that gets into place, you know, it's only strengthening this team going forward. My, my only concern is that, um, you know, they're looking very good under this regulation set. We get a 2026 and uh, what happens when they don't have their own engine supply and they're probably still um, relying on Mercedes going forward as, as, as a customer team. But in the meantime, I think they've done a remarkable job. They truly have. I mean, get this. In the first eight races of the season, the two drivers combined for 17 points, an average of 2.1 points per race. The last eight races that they've competed in, 145 points, an average of 18.1 a race. I mean, it's a night and day difference. Nate, when you look at Norris and Piastri, is this driver pair maybe the strongest on the grid moving forward into the future? Super exciting pairing. I mean, I think I wouldn't say they're quite the most exciting. I mean, they're definitely the most exciting. Whether they're the strongest pairing just yet, I think we need to see them okay. win some races. You know, if you look at, you know, I think we we always say on this, I think if you look pound for pound, Mercedes, you've obviously got Lewis there, but they've also got George, who's won a race, has taken mm -hmm. pole. I mean, Lando, 
you know, Lando's just waiting. I think he's he, he's had the same amount of second positions this year as Perez, which is remarkable for all kinds of reasons. It's remarkable for Norris. It's also remarkable that that, Nor- uh, that Perez has allowed that situation to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's just, we know he's going to win a race at some point. And Piastri, I mean, he has come in. I've been so impressed with him. You know, I mean, if you compare what Ricardo was doing last year alongside Norris, how he was struggling, Piastri's come in and he's one of these guys, he's a bit like Verstappen in the way he talks about racing in that he just doesn't really seem that phased by the, you know, kind of the hype and the praise around him. And I think that's always very, very telling when you see that. So I think give him a win or two each. And I'd probably revise that about Mercedes because, um, I mean, Lewis's Lewis's experience is always going to be huge, but in terms of just the excitement you've got there, the fact that Piastri has also signed up until 20, 2026, past that regulation change that Lawrence mentioned, um, is a huge ringing endorsement of the team. But also it shows, you know, they've got that stability. I think Norris is there till 2026 at least. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I think if you're McLaren right now, you know, in the space of six months, it's gone from doom and gloom to you know, an incredibly good situation. And um, I definitely, you mentioned earlier about having certain things on your bingo card, Katie, McLaren turning the season around was not on mine. So I have to, yeah. you know, I have to, you know, eat humble pie on that one. Cause I don't <laughs> think even, even them saying they were going to be the fourth fastest, it just seems so absurd at the start of the year because they were so far behind everyone. Um, but, um, but yeah, no, they've done a fantastic job. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.